Welcome to 10 years of the Young Ambassador program. We started with just the humble nine, and all we wanted to do was to help. We started with simple, achievable projects, and nothing was too small in the name of giving back. We learned and grew, and we were happy to be creative and explore. We found different ways to give back while keeping the classic events going. With more experience came more confidence, so we strive to work harder and dream bigger. Our Yap family grew to over 100 active members, and now we have more opportunities than ever. Teamwork and peer mentorship became our theme. Members support each other to reach their common goal of giving back. We reached $1 million fundraised milestone, but more importantly, we helped countless lives. We are building a family of love. We are building a legacy of giving. Our passion creates commitment, and that commitment and persistence make miracles. Shy Mother's Day Tea was our biggest event yet. We raised over $400,000 for BC Children's Hospital. Every success has a beginning, and all you need to do is to start at your beginning. Join us today.
Hello everyone, bonjour à tous, and welcome to the Youth in Motion online charity concert. For starters, I want to thank D2D Destiny Foundation for bringing us all together today. I also want to congratulate them on the 10th anniversary of the Young Ambassadors Program, which has now raised over $2 million in support of the BC Children's Hospital Foundation. This is an important milestone that has made, and will continue to make, a significant difference in the lives of families across BC and Canada. C'est un autre exemple qui montre à quel point les jeunes Canadiens transforment positivement nos communautés. Et aujourd'hui, en cette journée internationale de la jeunesse, on célèbre les contributions que les jeunes apportent d'un bout à l'autre du pays. Whether pushing for social justice or fighting for those who need it the most, youth across Canada are standing up for causes they believe in and making our society better every day. You are the leaders right now. And we're going to keep fighting for you and with you to build a better future for everyone. Because your passion and determination will change the world. Thank you for joining this important event, and I hope that you enjoy the concert. Stay safe and healthy, everyone. Merci. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. My name is Alice Lin, and I'm privileged to be your MC for the inaugural Youth in Motion online charity concert. Tonight, we are here to raise money for BC Children's Hospital here in beautiful British Columbia, Canada. This online charity concert is brought to you by a very special group of youth, the Young Ambassador Program, or YAP for short. This group of young people have been tirelessly fundraising to help sick kids for the past 10 years. Their humble beginning came from a simple idea. Arthur Chan, the founder of YAP, wanted to give back to the place that saved his life. We'll tell you his story in a bit. And in just seven years, YAP reached this $1 million accumulated fundraising amount for BC Children's Hospital. Tonight, they want to reach another monumental milestone of $2 million. So we need your help to raise the last $100,000. Please follow the link in the description bcchf.ca slash youth in dash motion to donate or bid in the online silent auction at youthinmotion.live. The auction items include dining experience, fashion items, collectibles, health and wellness items, and even vacation packages for exploring our beautiful province. We're very thankful for those who donated these auction items, and we're also grateful for our media partner Fairchild TV and Talent Vision TV for always being there to help us. In recent months, the global community got a shocking reminder of just how fragile our lives are and how important our frontline health workers are. So tonight, we are dedicating this program to thank and celebrate our frontline healthcare workers. We have some of the most talented youth performers from all over the world supporting us. So stay tuned and don't forget to donate. To kick off tonight's performance is Angelina Dang. She is the voice of YAP. Angelina has been fundraising for BC Children since 2013, and when she was 10 years old, she recorded a charity CD, which raised over $5,000 for the hospital. She's also this year's YAP co-chair. So here's Angelina using her talent for good, performing I Believe by Nikki Yanofsky. There comes a moment when my heart must stand alone. On this lonely path I've chosen Like a house that's not a home Sometimes when I feel I've had enough And I feel like giving up You will me to be all I can be No, nothing can stop me I believe in the power that comes From a world Run together as one I believe together we'll fly I believe in the power of you and I This is the moment We have dreamed of all our lives We'll be the change we wish from others We'll stand tall for what is right and in my heart there'll be no doubt The arms of the world will come reaching now Embrace me to be all I can be Now nothing can stop me I believe in the power 
power that comes from a world brought together as one. I believe together we'll fly. I believe in the power of one. I believe the time is right now. Everyone, bonjour tout le monde. On behalf of the Senate of Canada, congratulations to the D2D Destiny Foundation on reaching an incredible milestone of the 10th anniversary of the Young Ambassador Program and reaching the two million dollar fundraising goal that you have all achieved together. And how fitting that on International Youth Day that you are having this Youth in Motion virtual charity event. So to all those who put in tireless hours to make this event possible, thank you. I applaud you. And on behalf of the Senate, just we are so lucky to have you in Canada. I know there are performers from around the world, and again, youth empowering youth, youth contributing to such a good cause. So I know this event is going to be so successful. And I hope the fundraising efforts on the e philanthropy store will also be successful. And so, so to all the sponsors and donors and volunteers who have taken part in the success of D2D Destiny Foundation, please continue to do so. And thank you on behalf of the Senate of Canada. Hello, Premier John Horgan here. I want to take this opportunity to congratulate you on the 10th anniversary of the Young Ambassador Program. This all began with Arthur Chan. After surviving leukemia as a child, Arthur wanted to give back to the BC Children's Hospital. What Arthur started with a few friends has grown into much more. By 2018, you raised a million dollars for the hospital. Your award-winning work is making a huge difference. Helping those in need is more important now than ever. The COVID-19 pandemic has challenged and changed us, but it has also shown us that we are stronger when we work together. With young leaders like you showing the way, I know we're going to build back better than ever before. British Columbia is depending on that, and so am I. Congratulations as we go forward together. Hi, as one of the co-chairs of the 2020 Young Ambassadors Program, I'm so grateful that I got to use my singing to give back to the community again. I hope all of you watching tonight will help us as well, and you can follow our links to support us. Next, I will be introducing my friend who has been on this charity journey with me throughout the years, my co-chair, May Fan. Hi everyone, I'm the co-chair of 2020 Young Ambassadors Program, and I'm just as glad as Angelina to be able to lead this year's program. Throughout the year, we've come up with so many ways to give back to the community with flower sales, garage sales, galas, and many, many other events. I'm so proud that YAP has come so far, and I'm always amazed by our members' creativity in coming up with different ways to fundraise, and even more amazed by the amount of support we get from the most unlikely places sometimes. While tonight's virtual concert is our first virtual event, I'm sure it'll be a success because I know everyone who is watching will be rooting for us. I hope you will all enjoy the program tonight, and I would like to thank you all in advance for donating, for bidding on silent auction, and helping us share our live stream on social media. Thank you. And now I'm honored to introduce Ms. Terry Nicholas, President and CEO of BC Children's Hospital Foundation for her greetings to the Young Ambassadors Program. Hello everyone, my name is Terry Nicholas and I'm the President and CEO of BC Children's Hospital Foundation. 
I am truly inspired by each of you in the Young Ambassadors Program. 10 years of supporting the hospital, and on top of that, raising $2 million during that time is a remarkable achievement and one you should be very, very proud of. Nothing brings me greater joy than this opportunity to extend my heartfelt congratulations to you for your commitment, hard work, and leadership. And I applaud each of you for all that you have done for the kids in British Columbia. As youth yourself, you hold a unique position in your efforts to come together and help shape a healthier future for the one million kids across BC who rely on BC Children's Hospital. Your support is giving many of your fellow peers across the province and your generation of youth hope for a brighter future. I would also like to congratulate Arthur Chan, founder of the Young Ambassadors Program for inspiring other youth through his example of giving back to the community. Arthur, your leadership is what inspires us to continue our quest to safeguard the health of BC's kids. I'm quoting a phrase you've shared before when I say that philanthropy has no boundaries. The Youth in Motion virtual fundraising concert is a prime example of talented youth from around the globe coming together to ensure kids receive the best care imaginable. Thank you to all the Young Ambassadors for being devoted supporters of BC Children's Hospital. Your work has touched and benefited many children in British Columbia and around the world, giving them every opportunity to fulfill their hopes and dreams. Hello, my name is Crystal Lin and I've been a longtime member of Yappin D2D and I am your other MC for the night. I am so glad that I was involved in the many charity events that Yappin D2D has had over the years. It's such a great platform for us youth to give back to the community. Not only are we helping others, but we're making lifelong friendships. I am so proud of what we've achieved and trust that with your help, we will be able to reach our $2 million milestone tonight. And right now, I'd like to introduce you to the man who started everything, Yap, DTD founder, and my friend, Arthur Chan. Hi everyone, I'm Arthur, and I'm very excited to be here tonight. The story of YAP and D2D began when I was diagnosed with leukemia and spent four years at BC Children's Hospital as a patient. Growing up, I remember my parents were involved in a lot of different fundraising events to give back to the hospital. And so when I was 14, I decided that I want to help. That's why I started the Young Ambassador program with eight friends. I never imagined that 10 years later, we would have changed so many lives, not just the people we helped, but influencing youth to understand the importance of giving back to the community. Throughout this philanthropic journey, I not only saw how it's shaping my career, but also seen our members blossom. So many have transformed from meek, shy teenagers into passionate, outspoken, positive influencers and leaders. When I see the gleeful faces at our fundraising events, I know we've created something really, really special. I want to congratulate all our members and parents throughout the years. This 10 year milestone is everybody's achievement, but to reach that $2 million goal, we are counting on you those who are watching us right now to support and donate. Tonight, the first story we would like to present to you is one that's very similar to my own. Aiden Chin had the same type of cancer I had and his journey has also inspired him and his family to give back to BC Children's Hospital. And I hope it will inspire you too. I don't expect my cancer to come back. It's a new chapter in my life. I guess there is a sense of being a child, being a teen again. So there are times when I do feel free. I don't think I could ever fully go back to what it was like before. Bren was seven years old and I was only 11, so we both were just kids, right? I had no clue. I, I, I heard the cancer word and I was just like, what is that? Okay, maybe I'm gonna see him uh, tomorrow. My eyes kind of started opening up and I was just like, Aiden's not gonna be here for a while. I'm only gonna see him maybe a couple times a week. It just 
keep on going in my head, like what if he was not gonna make it? What if I wasn't gonna see him at home anymore? There were times when I was feeling really sick and out of it and tired, and there were times when it wasn't always the chemo, it was about how other patients in the hospital were doing. You, you don't know what it's like, because I've been through so much pain, but I want to be here for two weeks. And they've been here for six months, you say? And I was sad that there were other patients and there were other children that were younger than me going through cancers that were harder than mine. Basically from that point on I was like, why don't I try to get through it and then hopefully come back, help out. That's what I've basically been trying to do since I finished treatment. I got to join this club at the hospital called the Oncology Teen Group Club. It's something that you can't find out of the hospital. As a survivor, I'm still part of the teen group. There's still a lot of support that I can give to them and they can give to me because there's an understanding that uh, treatment isn't over when you're a survivor. There's still um, an emotional side of things. You have friends that are going through it, friends that are, aren't going to make it through it, and that becomes a reality for you. It's not just over. Brooke was a friend of mine that I met in the hospital, and uh, she became basically a, um, a sister to me. Brooke was definitely the closest friend that I had that I lost. The day before she passed away, I did get to see her in the hospital, and I did get to hold her hand, talk to her, and say goodbye, and tell her I loved her one last time. And I don't believe that you can accept something like that. You have to, I guess, learn to cope with it more. Before, I felt like cancer was something that was rare, that one in a ton of kids would be diagnosed, but it's not rare, and there's a lot of kids in oncology, children that are going through what you went through, and pain that is um, unexplainable. I want to be able to give back to those that have helped me in the hospital, that have made it so that I can go out there and be active and just live my life again. It's a really good feeling that I could just go home and do something with my brother now. Without Children's in the Hospital, my brother wouldn't be here, so I'm eternally grateful for them being there. I'm looking forward to staying connected to the hospital because it's been such a big part. Giving back and uh, pursuing the dreams that I have and being able to do that because of BC Children's Hospital. Hi, my name is Aiden and I was a longtime patient at BC Children's Hospital. I just want to congratulate you all on this amazing milestone. Without youth like you, the hospital wouldn't be able to do the caring and meaningful work it does. We as youth continue to impress as we support each other. Thank you for all the work that you've done and continue to do for the kids at BC Children's Hospital. Our next performer is a 13 year old who's already accomplished so much. She's a Spanish pop singer, songwriter, and model, and her claim to fame is competing on the talent show series La Voz Kids at the age of 9. She has also performed on NBC's Little Big Shots at the age of 10, and her latest accomplishment was making it to the quarterfinal in the 2019's America's Got Talent. She's going to perform the English rendition of Manuel Carrasco's A Dreamer. Let's welcome Charlotte Summers. Hi everyone, I'm Charlotte Summers and I'm so excited to be part of the Youth in Motion online charity concert. This song is inspired by following your dreams and believing in yourself. This song is from a very famous artist in Spain called Manuel Carrasco and this is my English version. I hope you enjoy it. So much you like that cuts in doubt I know I fit it with your pain so tell me please, please come to me Go make a judgment Listen to me or listen to Give all your soul to make things work Yet everything went wrong You had made a bad mistake But your love was pure and strong Reality we severally set of you Believe me, believe me, believe me, my 
celebrating the 10th anniversary and passing your 2 million milestone. I hope that more kids like me can unite and make a difference in our community through music. Happy International Youth Day! Bye! Welcome back! Have you had a chance to take a look at our online silent auction items? I think there's really something for everyone, so head over to youthinmotion.live to check out the auction and bid on the items you want. Here's our member Coco Lin to showcase one of our featured items from the silent auction. Thank you everyone for supporting our charity auction tonight. We have a wide variety of items that are suitable for all ages. From shopping sprees to dining experiences and hype items such as Supreme Sweatshirt, Jordan 4, and Hockey Stick signed by 2020 Vancouver Canucks most exciting player, Elias Peterson. Make sure to check out our social enterprise project, SND Dieties, and support a good cause at d2dedestiny.com. Congratulations to the Young Ambassador Program for your 10th anniversary and reaching your 2 million milestone. I am so proud of you all for being so involved in the community and I wish you so much love and the best of luck. Congratulations! Over the years, YAP began to attract more members and so founder Arthur and other members started having bigger dreams. They wanted to do more for the community. So with that idea, D2D Destiny Foundation was founded in 2015 and Sue launched the e-philanthropy store, setting the goal to one day be the Amazon of online charity stores. And since inception, D2D has used the online charity store to support many charities. So tonight's fundraiser is a partnership of YAP and D2D, the most amazing and inspirational youth who dare to dream to make the world a better place. Tonight's show wouldn't be possible without the strong youth leadership, and one of the key leaders of this event is Natalie Chan. For event concept to this moment, she has been involved through and through. So on behalf of everyone behind the scene, here's Natalie. Hello everyone, I'm Natalie, and on behalf of the whole YAP and D2D team, I'd like to first express our sincere gratitude to all the performers who are here with us today, supporting and celebrating this milestone with us. Secondly, I want to thank our parent committee, charity partner, media partner, and our two MCs, Alice and Crystal, for all the support you have given us. Last, but definitely not least, a huge thank you to our producer, Carol, and to everyone who has been working countless hours behind the scenes to make this dream concert a reality. D2D and YAP is a platform that provides us as youth, like me, a safe space to explore and take up many leadership positions. 
As many of us are still growing and trying to figure this world out, I'm grateful that along the way we get to connect and meet many generous and like-minded individuals. So finally, to everyone who is watching right now, please stay with us till the very end as we still have many outstanding performances in store and lots of inspiring stories to share. Also, don't forget to donate and check out our silent auction as every effort makes a difference. We are a team. We have a dream. We work together. We achieve together. Dare to dream to make the world a better place. One of the most memorable moments of Yap was when they hit the $1 million accumulative fund raised milestone in 2017. And since then, neither Yap nor D2D has slowed down. And in 2018, four young leaders, CC Guan, Julie Chen, Eddie Yu, and Jason Chen, led the Youth in Motion Raise Me Up campaign that raised over $150,000 in support of the annual For Children We Carry Gala and funds went towards purchasing an FES stepper for Sunny Hill Healthcare for Children. That very same year, the Four Children We Carry Gala had a very special performer who is also here to support us today, the very talented Angelica Hale, golden buzzers receiver and runner-up of the 12th season of America's Got Talent. Angelica had her own health crisis when she was very young. At the age of four, she suffered complications from a severe bacterial pneumonia that gave her permanent scarring on her lung, but that didn't stop the girl. So today, not only has Angelica showcased her big voice and talent to the world, she's also shown her big heart with participation in many, many charity events. She's the first kid ambassador of the National Kidney Foundation in the US and we're so grateful to have her support for BC Children's Hospital once again. So thank you, Angelica, for joining us once again in Helping Sick Kids. Hi, everyone. It's Angelica Hale here, singer and runner-up on America's Got Talent 2017, and I am so excited to be here with you all uh, virtually um, for the Youth in Motion online charity concert. Thank you guys so much for having me. Um, the song that I wanted to sing for you guys today means a lot to me and it's near and dear to my heart. I believe that anyone can reach their dreams if they keep believing in themselves and persisting and that you shouldn't be afraid to reach for the stars and <laughs> even a million dreams. And so here it is, one of my most favorite songs, A Million Dreams.
Congratulations to the Youth Ambassador Program for celebrating their 10th anniversary and for passing their $2 million milestone. That is amazing. Congratulations to you guys. And I hope that more kids like me in the future can bring our communities together through music. And once again, guys, happy International Youth Day! Wow, what a voice. We're so blessed to have so many talented youth all over the world supporting us tonight. And I hope Angelica's big voice and big heart has inspired you to give as well. Just follow the links in the caption or description to bid on our silent auction or just simply donate. Like and share our stream and ask your friends to help out too. You can be that inspiration of giving back. YAP is truly an organization where youth inspires youth. We've seen over the years, members influence their peers, older siblings influence younger siblings. And right now, I would like to present you to such a case. Amy Guan is following her big sister Cece Guan's footsteps in making a difference. Hi, I'm Amy Guan. I'm one of the 2020 YAP co-vice chairs. My sister Cece Guan was involved in the last Youth in Motion Raise Me Up campaign. I've heard the story of my sister touring Sunny Hill Health Center and learning how Sunny Hill will be moving to BC Children's Campus and how that will transform the lives of rehab patients and their families. At that tour, my sister met Colton and his family in person. He was a rehab patient, so the whole experience was more meaningful because of that meeting. It put a face to all the hard work we put in, and we could really see how much we can impact families in need. So tonight, I'd like to present to you Colton's story. During the day, Colton was feeling some bit of asthma, and it wasn't until um, later on in the evening that he woke up in the middle of the night and he was really having trouble breathing. It was about 3 a.m. when we got to Children's Hospital. We got up to the counter. While we were standing there, he collapsed and I yelled out for help. A fellow came, grabbed him with one arm and a whole bunch of people showed up and they started CPR on him right away. When he went unconscious, I was just in shock and seeing them do CPR, because I know what that means. There's no, no pulse. And, He's not breathing and once that started to happen I realized I had to phone Rachel right away. His first words that came out of his mouth were, it's bad, it's really bad. I'd, I'd never felt that kind of shock before in my life. It was definitely scary. So I said, okay, I'm, I'm coming right away and I'll, you know, trying to keep it together as much as I could, but telling myself he's at Children's Hospital, that's, you know, the best place for him. It took about 15 minutes of, of resuscitation and then first going into the ICU was such a shock to see him hooked up to so many machines. And You know, he was sedated at the time. They had a tube down his throat and it was just a scary thing to see. Um, you know, when he left, he was Colton and then it's, it's just terrifying seeing your child like that. It never crossed my mind that he had lost oxygen and would have a brain injury. The brain is, is quite dependent on supply of oxygen and, and sugar, glucose, and if it's deprived of either for more than three to five minutes, you can start to see some effects similar to a stroke. 
They took him off sedation and immediately he started talking and his voice was slurred and we thought, okay, you know, he's just sleepy from the sedation. But then we noticed a deficiency on the left side of his body and we still were optimistic. And then after a couple of days and he kind of pretty much lost everything. He had a, a you know, tube for feeding, he couldn't speak. He was, seemed like he was nearly blind. Once he was, the asthma was stabilized, then we moved on to Sunny Hill. The role at Sunny Hill was to rehabilitate him, and that's sort of when we started to see him progress instead of regress. It was amazing, the progress that he was having there. It went from, you know, not being able to eat or see to all of a sudden now he's sitting up in bed and now he's standing. Hey. Beautiful. Easy, easy. I'm working. Keep up. And you know? he was he was very motivated he was... too. Like he was it, <laughs> I I've never been so impressed by somebody in my entire life. You know, never just, complained. He, this no. is what it is. Well we we thought it could be yeah. months. three months, six months, a year. They, they they couldn't tell us. So that's one of the reasons why we we're so amazed that he recuperated so quickly. He's an amazing brother. He's uh, five years older than Naomi, seven years older than Brielle, and they miss Colton. I, I picked him up and brought him home, and it was just, it was exciting for Colton, too. Hoping to get him back, to Just back to a, living a, a normal life again, back yeah. to the things he likes to do. He has a uh, tremor in his hands, so I mean, like Lego, which is his favorite, doing that. His hands are really shaky. My name is Colton and I'm 11 years old. On a scale of 1 to 10, I like Lego a 20. The Children's Hospital, they are... It means everything. They're everything to us. They saved our boy. We knew from early on that that, that was the only place to go. They're amazing. When he was back, we, Dr. Meckler came in and he, you know, said, this is why we do what we do. I think it truly is one of the rare miracles. We were just very fortunate to, to have everything happen in the right place at the right time. I'm very grateful for everybody who donates because it gives people a second chance to live, like me. Hi, my name is Colton and I'm a patient at BC Children's Hospital. I want to congratulate you all on this amazing milestone. Without youth like you, the hospital wouldn't be able to do the wonderful work it does. I am so impressed seeing youth supporting youth to help the hospital. Thank you for all that you have done and continue to do for the kids. Hi everybody, my name is Eliza Sam. I just want to congratulate everybody from the Young Ambassador Program for your 10 year anniversary and for reaching your $2 million milestone goal. Congratulations, I wish you guys the best of luck. Helping BC Children to moving Sunny Hill Health Centre for Children to the same campus as the hospital was a huge endeavour. So in the same year as the Raise Me Up campaign, we also had a Helping Kids Shine charity concert that summer, where youth, volunteers and talents worked together to put on the charity concert for Sunny Hill. Here's David Guo sharing how he helped during that event. Hi, this is David. I was the photographer for the 2018 Helping Kids Shine charity concert. We had so many talented people performing that night, from d d members Patrick Wang and Eva Minz to the St. Patrick's Choir. The whole night was simply amazing. And while I'm not as musically gifted as those on stage, I was happy to contribute just the same with my camera by recording the memorable evening. I really think everyone can get back in their own way, so I hope those watching will join us in helping those in need. Please use the link below to donate. Thank you, David, for sharing. And he's so right that we're all capable of giving back. So go bid on the silent auction or just donate. You can also help us like and share this live stream. Maybe someone you know would be able to help. You'd be surprised at just how much influence you actually have. And now you're in for a treat because we have the Helping Kids Shine Charity Concert pianist, Patrick Wang, performing for us tonight. Patrick has been a longtime supporter of YAP and D2D. He even started the Hong Kong chapter of D2D after he moved back to Asia to continue his study. He was also chosen as Carnegie Hall performer in 2017 and 2018, and the first runner-up at International Music Competition of American Prodigy. So here's the talented Patrick.
Yay, Patrick, that was mesmerizing. Yapin D2D is a great platform for youth to show off their talent and creativity. Not only do we have musically gifted people like Patrick, we also have fashion forward members like Cece Guan with her own fashion collection in our D2D e store. We even have designers in the house. Julie Chen is one of the designers of our very first D2D brand product. Our Hangers of Love were released last December. Here's a promo from last holiday season, followed by a message from designer Julie. Decorate all your celebration with love. Buy our hanger of love, designed and merchandised by D2D members. Shop for a good cause at d2ddestiny.com. Hi, this is Julie. I am so happy to be a part of the Hanger of Love project, and it's so exciting to be involved in the designing and marketing process of this very first D2D branded product. D2D's e philanthropy store has many fashion items all the time, so we thought some beautiful Tiffany blue hangers would go perfectly with the whole new wardrobe you can buy from D2D. From finding the right type of hangers that is both durable and beautiful to the logistic and marketing, the whole process was just so interesting and I've learned so much. So when you win the silent auction or buy things from the East store, consider also picking up these pretty hangers to go with your new wardrobe. Thank you. Our next performer, Luke Islam, has wowed judges and received golden buzzer from his favorite judge, Julianne Huff, in the 14th season of America's Got Talent, and he eventually went on to compete in the semi-final. Luke is from New York, and he's absolutely obsessed with Broadway musicals. He dreams to one day become the star of his own show on Broadway. Tonight, we wish to help all the sick kids get back to normal life so they can pursue their dream just like Luke. So please help us spread the word and donate. Hi everyone, I'm Luke Islam, and I am so excited to be a part of the Youth in Motion online charity concert. The song that I will be singing is about the idea of bringing everyone together and staying positive during this pandemic. Here is Beautiful City from the musical Godspell.
congratulations to the Young Ambassador Program for celebrating your 10th anniversary. I hope that more kids like me can unite together and make a difference in our community through music. Happy International Youth Day. Hi guys, this is Jeannie and I wanna say congratulations to the Young Ambassadors Program on your 10th year anniversary. And also congrats for passing your $2 million milestone. Laura had always been on the outside. Back then we saw it as Laura being a willful child, a difficult child. We didn't really know then what we know now about what was really going on for her, what she was really experiencing, what this behavior was trying to tell us. She was feeling so alone and so sad, and she was retreating to her room, but not in, not in a healthy way, in a, in a lonely, sad way. I felt so worthless and empty because I had no friends. Like, I would go into class and not talk to anyone from 8.30 to 3 p.m. So I spent a lot of time, even in kindergarten, alone, I think it was just the feeling of rejection and I felt empty. I had nothing to live for. So I decided that the best course of action would be to just take my own life so I could end it because if you're dead, you don't feel anything. You're just not there. Laura was in her bedroom and that's when she took about 100 Motrin. It was hard, it was a hard experience in the emergency room. Where we were, that hospital wasn't equipped really to deal with that. There were nurses and there were doctors, but they weren't experts. It's the hard part. <laughs> she was trying to hang herself from the curtain rod with a rubber tube. The security came and they forced her into her bed and they sedated her while I watched. I think when you hear your child tell you she feels nothing, it's heartbreaking. We just wanted to help her, but we didn't know how because nothing was changing, nothing was getting better. I did have good days and bad days, so days where I felt better, and then days where I was really suicidal and actively looking for something I could use to harm myself or kill myself. You start to believe that nobody can help you. She ran down the street in her socks and Laura was going to jump off the bridge. And we got her back in the car and we took her to Children's. And that was the best thing we did. To have someone like a psychiatrist say to you, she's in pain. It just opened this door for us to walk through and understand we're we need to help her. They decided that it would be the best if I went to the long-term stay, where they could evaluate me for a prolonged period of time and really get to the root of the problem, what was going on. At Children's, she was going to get the help that she needed. But what we didn't know was we were going to get the help that we needed. And I could go home, and I didn't need to sleep outside of her door and know that she was safe with people who cared because I never felt judged. And they never judged her, and they spoke to her gently and kindly. 
like she was a person who was sick. I felt relief, I felt calmer. It's a lot to carry. I thought I was the only one that could keep her safe. If we start to believe that this is something we did and our fault, then how can we be strong and help our child? If I could tell parents who are struggling with their children is to try to find a way to find the meaning behind the behavior. So it takes a lot of work, but if you can listen and hear what they're trying to tell you, I think they're always trying to tell us something. I think I smile a lot because some of the things that have happened to me are just too painful. And one of the things they taught us in therapy was that if you smile, you trick your brain and your brain thinks it's happy or it's funny. So I just try to smile, it makes it more bearable. You know, just, it will get better and there's so much more. Now, I think I'm just happy. I'm content with my life, who I am, where I'm going. And I still feel those things sometimes, but I'm able to work through it and push and get there. I think great things are in store for her. Children's gave her that. We've just watched a touching story of Laura and Allison. It's so hard to imagine young people suffering from mental health issues. In Laura's case, I'm so glad to see that BC Children saved her life and was able to help the family understand how to help her. 2020 has been a very, very trying year for everyone. We're all going through difficult times because of COVID-19. Many of us are feeling stressed to the max. While some might think kids have it easy because many of them haven't had school since spring break, that's actually not true at all. Kids need their routine and structure, so it's very important to be on the lookout for signs that your child might need mental health support. YAP has been supporting and advocating for mental health through our fundraising efforts. Our participation in the annual race for the kids fundraiser is aimed to support childhood cancer research and mental health. Here's one of our members, Andy He, on the race for the kids event. Hi, I'm Andy. I've been participating in race for the kids fundraiser to support childhood cancer research and mental health. This event is very meaningful for me because our beginning started with Arthur who recovered from cancer and my brother Bill He participated at the early stage of YAP program. As I follow my brother's footsteps, I understand supporting cancer research is very dear to our hearts. As patients are recovering from cancers and illnesses, mental health is a different topic among any age, and probably even more so for youth as our growing bodies make it harder for us to understand what is going on. I believe it is so important to support this race for the kids fundraiser as Team Yap because the fundraiser itself is an awareness walk with the broader community. And by walking together, we promote better mental health and exercise and peer support. So hope you'll donate and support us in giving back as a team. Well said, Andy. We need to be talking about mental health all the time in order to normalize it. It's just like any other health condition. We need to recognize it and treat it. Just like if we can't see well, we need glasses. It's as normal as that. Our next performer has reflected on what's happening around the world and wish she can use her talent to put a smile on your face. This little girl has been singing from a very young age, and she's the runner-up for Thailand's Got Talent at the age of seven. To further her singing career, she went to Taiwan to participate in the Jungle Voice Singing Contest. She got fourth place on the show, and she was number one by audience vote with close to 1.4 million votes. Already a recording artist in Thailand and Taiwan, you can't help but smile when you see her perform. Let's say hi to Gail! Hi everyone, I'm Gail Sofica and I'm from Thailand. I'm really happy that I get to be a part of Youth in Motion online charity concert. And So what are you going to do for us today? I like to sing because it's 
it makes me happy and when I sing it makes people smile which makes them happy which also makes me happy so I just really love to sing and I also like to sing because it's I feel that it's relaxing when I sing it's just like really relaxing and the song that I will be singing today is Heal the World and this song is inspired by the COVID-19 during these time because I feel like during these time the the disease had made people kind of like break apart so I believe that if if we cooperate and if we love each other and help each other out we will be able to heal the world and make it a better place very soon so that's why I wanted to sing this song heal the world and I hope you guys enjoy it that is such a thoughtful choice and very meaningful during this time. So take it away, Gail. There's a place in your heart and I know that it is love. And this place could be much brighter than tomorrow. And if you really try, you find there's no need to cry In this place, you feel there's no hurt or sorrow There are ways to get there If you care enough for the living Make a little space Make a better place Heal the world Make it a better place For you care enough for the living make a better place for you and for me if you want to know why there's a love that cannot lie love is strong it only cares for joyful giving if we try we shall see in this bliss we cannot feel Fear or dread, we stop existing and start living Then it feels that always Love's enough for us growing Make a better world Make a better world Heal the world Make it a better place For you care enough for the living make a better place for you and for me and the dream we were conceived in will reveal a joyful face and the world we once believed in will shine again in grace then why do we keep strangling life when this earth crucified the soul that it's plain to see this world is heavenly Big heads glow Heal the world Make it a better place For you and for me And the inside human race There are people dying If you care enough for the living Make a better place for you Congratulations to the Young Ambassador Program for celebrating your 10th anniversary and passing your milestone. I hope that more kids like me can unite together and make a difference in our community through music. Happy International Youth Day! Thank you, Gail. Your voice indeed put a smile on my face. And we hope the healing power of your voice made the day for our audience as well. 
This year, to celebrate the 10th anniversary, Yap was originally going to have a big celebration at the second annual Shine Mother's Day Tea in May. Not only was it going to be a fabulous fundraiser, but Yap was going to announce the next major project of supporting pediatric orthopedics. But due to the pandemic, everything has been pushed back. Giving, we're approaching September, and some kids might be going back to school. Yap believes now is just as important as ever to support orthopedics and raise awareness. Because not only does orthopedics help children who were born with musculoskeletal conditions, but for kids who might have accidentally injured themselves playing sports or even just having fun during recess. Kids are really fragile, and right now we'd like to show you a story that could have happened anywhere to anybody. Here's Sophia's story. For me, music is like a way of expressing your feelings through the pieces, and you can put all your emotions into it. It was when I was seven or eight years old when I realized I couldn't play at all because of my arm, it would just be so painful. I remember when I was five years old, when I was Chiplai 一接的时候 after I got my surgery in China, I saw my arm was growing in a weird way. My fingers would go numb and it would just freeze and it would hurt. And I just thought that maybe if I practiced more, I could get through it. The more I practiced, the more it started to hurt. Sophia broke her elbow when she was five, and she had a very common fracture of her elbow, which was fixed in China. Unfortunately, it wasn't fixed in the correct position. Over time, the deformity in her elbow got worse and worse. If this was untreated, then she would have been left with a significant lifelong disability. So it was clear that we had to do something. The surgery that we did was an external fixator, which is a frame which goes on the outside of the elbow. We create a gap in the bone and we very slowly increase that gap. It allows time for the bone cells to replicate and form new bone. 一开始的时候，当我听到说要重新把骨头打断，我我开始是真的是心里面还是挺抗拒的，因为要再受一次苦。I wasn't scared. I was rather excited. To me, it would seem like a new start for a new life. I had the frame on for four to five months. 
I had to turn the little screws every single day. So then it would slowly move my bones back to where it was supposed to be. It had definitely changed my life. I could actually move my arm without having too much pain and I was so surprised. The treatment that Sophia has had has straightened her elbow. We've also managed to get rid of her pain and take the pressure off her nerve. So this means that she can now return to normal activities and she has no restrictions in what she can do. The research we do is so important because the treatments that they have now as children has a direct effect on their quality of life as an adult. When I get older, I hope that I will still be playing my instrument in a whole new level and then I'll be playing table tennis. 作为妈妈的愿望的话呢，会比较简单。我是希望她健康和开心、快乐。中国说的“天无绝人之路”，只要你去努力，不管结果是如何，只要努力，总得会有一个小小的收获。Hi, my name is Sophia and I am a patient at the BC Children's Hospital. Congratulations to you all in reaching this amazing milestone! If it wasn't for youth like you, the hospital would not be able to do all the wonderful and dedicated work it does. I'm so surprised in seeing you supporting fellow youth to help the hospital. Thank you for all you have done in the past and continue to do for kids. Isn't it amazing the treatment helped Sophia to be herself again and she played so well. We wish to help more kids just like Sophia, so we need your help. So please help us spread the word and donate. Coming up next, we have a local celebrity, Tyson Venegas. Tyson has performed at Carnegie Hall, appeared in the 2018 Little Big Shots, and just last year he appeared in the Voice Teens Philippines. But most importantly, Tyson has a very close connection to the hospital, as his broken arm landed him in BC Children's. So, to give back, he performed at the Circle of Care celebration to thank donors who are helping kids just like Sophia and him. So here's Tyson giving back to your community once more with his talent. Hi everyone, I'm Tyson Venegas and I'm so excited to be part of the Youth in Motion online charity concert. Um, the song that I'm singing is called What If, and I hope it will bring you some positive energy while we are all trying to um, adapt to our new normal during this challenging time. Um, and congratulations to the Young Ambassador Program on their 10th anniversary and reaching their milestone. Um, and it's amazing to see how youth come together to fundraise for a great cause, especially for BC's Children's Hospital. So congratulations.
This is so exciting. I have such great news. We have just received a $50,000 donation from a donor. We cannot thank this generous donor enough for the donation, making a giant leap for YAP towards tonight's goal. It's just amazing seeing this platform allowing youth to inspire youth can get such support from the community. As one of the good doctor at BC Children said, Children are 25% of our total population, but they are 100% of our future. So we're so grateful for this generous donation. This good news makes the song choice of our next performer so much more fitting. Coming up next is another talented Canadian youth, Jeffrey Lee. At the age of 10, Jeffrey was the runner-up for Hidden Talent Canada, and he also participated in China's new generation of sound, Little Big Shots on NBC and also recently participated in the 13th season of America's Got Talent, winning hearts of the judges with the song he's going to perform for us tonight, You Raise Me Up by Josh Groban. Stormy seas. 
I am strong when I am on your shoulders. You raise me up to more than I can be. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on stormy. I am strong when I am on your shoulders. You raise me up more than I can be. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on stormy seas. I am strong when I am on your shoulders. You raise me up to more than I can be. It's Jeffrey Lee. Happy International Youth Day. I just hope everyone is staying safe and practicing social distancing so that we all can get through this pandemic together. As we know, this is the 10 year anniversary of the Young Ambassador Program, and I wish nothing but the best for this fundraising event. The Young Ambassador Program, BC Children's Hospital Foundation, and all the children around the world. Thank you, Jeffrey, for celebrating International Youth Day with us. Our next performer was actually partner in crime of Jeffrey at some point. Their duet performance of You Raise Me Up on Little Big Shots went viral online. However, this 12-year-old can really hold her own stage. She was a semi-finalist and a golden buzzer on the 12th season of America's Got Talent. Most recently, she was crowned the winner of the Mozart the Ongakuo, the Mozart Music King No. 1, a singing competition in Japan, and winning another golden buzzer at the World's Got Talent. And tonight, she will be performing for us. Take it away, Celine. Hi, everyone. I'm Celine Tam, and I'm so excited to be part of the Youth in Motion online charity concert. The song I'll be singing is Don't You Worry About a Thing. And the reason why I chose this song is because right now, a lot of people have a lot of weight on their shoulders right now and they're not able to go outside, they can't see friends and family members, um, they're, they just basically can't do what they're used to do. And so this song is for them to just loosen up a bit, to dance along or sing along if you want to. And what are we waiting for? Let's get started.
Don't you worry about a thing yeah. Everybody needs a change A chance to check out the news yeah. You're the only one who sees The genius to take is a fool Whoa, whoa, whoa. Before the video ends, I would just like to give an appreciation to the youth group in Vancouver, the Young Ambassadors Program. The Young Ambassadors Program has set a goal for themselves to reach the $2 million milestone for the BC Children's Hospital. After surviving cancer as a young child, Arthur wants to help the other children who have faced similar situations like him. So, today is International Youth Day. We shall all thank and appreciate Arthur and his team's hard work and dedication to these young patients and so we shall all support him and root for him. That's all I got and yeah, bye! 10 years of YAP is a time of celebration and reflection. We've always thought that there's no age limit to when you can give back, no matter if you're 80 or 8 years old. And this is why a few years back, some of our really young members have founded the Little Angel Program to help fundraise and I am very proud to be involved in guiding and mentoring them when they first started. With that said, I would like to introduce to you the founder of the Little Angel Program, Joyce Tang. Hi, I'm Joyce and I started volunteering at a very young age, starting at around grade 4 or 5. But seeing all older members doing so much, I felt that I wanted to do more. I was very glad to have people guide and help me start the, the Little Angel Program. Being in YAP and starting my own program has helped me grow so much personally. I was shy and afraid to speak in public when I was younger, but last year I was one of the MCs at our first inaugural Shy Mother's Day tea. Yes, I was still nervous, but I couldn't believe that I actually did it, speaking in front of hundreds of guests. So I'm very grateful for the opportunity. But of course, I didn't do this alone. I had other people helping me too. So I would like to introduce you to one of our little angel program founding members, Jason Chen. Hello, my name is Jason Chen. I started YAP at a very young age, but because it was a whole community of us, we always feel safe sharing and trying out our new creative ideas and ways to give back. We could always ask someone, whether if they're an old member or a parent, to help. In our last Mother's Day tea, we have raised over $400,000 for BC children. There has been a lot of hardworking people behind the scenes. Even though my involvement was limited, I still feel like I've helped. Every little bit helps. I wish you could support us by donating. Thank you. 
My name is Jackie Chang, and follow of my sister Joyce's footsteps who started the Little Angel program, I am so excited to help out YAP's 10th anniversary online charity sale. Thank you, Joyce and Jason. I am so proud of them and so proud to be a member of YAP. And I've just been told that we have met tonight's goal of $100,000. This means YAP has officially hit the $2 million milestone. On behalf of YAP and D2D, I would like to thank the donors for supporting us. And I am looking forward to another 10 years of success. We will continue to be a great platform for the next generation of youth and rally the community to join us in giving back. Hey guys, Joyce Chang here. I just wanted to wish the Young Ambassador Program a happy 10 year anniversary. And I also want to congratulate you guys for reaching your $2 million milestone. That is amazing. Keep it up and I wish you guys the best of luck. Love from Hong Kong. Mwah. I am so happy that we have reached tonight's goal and Gap hitting the $2 million milestone. Congratulations to all the youth and very thankful to their parents too for supporting this good cause. Again, I'd like to say thank you to all the donors and those who helped us spread the word and shared our stream. As tonight's fundraiser is coming to an end, I'd like to wish everyone a very happy International Youth Day and happy 10th anniversary to YAP. I hope everyone enjoyed our program and I'm honored to have been your MC. Thank you for watching and good night. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your support. Thank you for supporting BC Children's Hospital. Thank you for supporting BC Children's Hospital. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your support. Thank you for supporting BC Children's Hospital. Thank you for supporting BC Children's Hospital. Thank you for supporting BC Children's Hospital. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your support. Thank you for supporting BC Children's Hospital. Thank you for supporting BC Children's Hospital. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your support. Thank you for supporting BC Children's Hospital. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your support. Thank you for supporting BC Children's Hospital. Thank you for your support. And thank you for supporting BC Children's Hospital. Thank you for your support. Thank you for supporting BC Children's Hospital. Thank you for supporting BC Children's Hospital. Thank you for your support. 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 Thank you for supporting Children's Hospital. Thank you for your support. Thank you for supporting BC Children's Hospital. Thank you for your support. Thank you for supporting BC Children's Hospital. Thanks for supporting BC Children's Hospital. Thank you for your support. Thank you for supporting BC Children's Hospital. Thank you for supporting BC Children's Hospital. Thank you for all your love and support. Thank you for supporting BC Children's Hospital.